In Six Sigma, one of the things we want to calculate is the cost of poor quality. And so let's say I used to work in the phone company, and so for phone company repair, we might start to lay out what the various tasks are. So we might have to take a repair call, dispatch a tech, do the repair, do some administrative stuff. There might be some uh, management time. Uh, usually there's not a lot of other things going on in uh, telephone processing, but we might have the average number of hours to do the task. And here's a loaded rate for how long it, it costs to do all of this. And then there's a cost of materials to do all these things. Any other failure costs that fall in here. Then we add all of that up and cost per, fa per failure is calculated down here. And then we might have some other uh, things like maybe we lose an opportunity. Well, you know, maybe that tech could be installing a phone instead of fixing a phone. You know, so what about, you know, what if we've lost some assets or something like that? What if we lose business? You know, so this person, you know, that had this problem may tell their friends not to take our, our service or something. And we can calculate that in there. And that gives us an, an annual failure cost per outage, all right? And so those can be fairly substantial, and that's one way to calculate the cost of quality. And in the QI macros, you can find those under the improvement tools, the cost of poor quality. And then we also want to look just at the cost of quality worksheet. So that's the cost of poor quality. But what about the cost of quality, all right? So to make quality happen. Now there's three things Deming always talked about. We can have prevention costs, the stuff we do to prevent errors, appraisal costs, the cost to inspect things, internal failure costs, what happens if it fails here, and external failure costs. And so failure costs are one group, appraisal costs and prevention costs. And so literally we can get in here and say, well, you know, uh, what does it cost us uh, from marketing and product and service and purchasing? You know, what are we doing on the prevention side? And then what about inspection and testing? All right, so we can start to do this by current month and by year date. Um, other appraisal things, uh, products and service design failures, purchasing failures, scrap, rework. Again, you start to put all of these numbers in place here, and you'll end up figuring out what your total failure costs are and what those costs are to make that happen. And then, you know, figure out what that is as a percent of your, your net sales per month. And you can get some idea about how much quality is costing you and uh, how much it's benefiting or not benefiting you. Again, from a, a Deming point of view, if you do it right, prevention should be one of those things that mistake proofs things. You shouldn't have a lot of inspection and testing. You shouldn't have much failure, right? If we make it well, we're not going to have those kinds of problems. But this is how to go about analyzing uh, the costs of quality to make sure that everything goes out the door well and the cost of poor quality uh, for things like repair and, and waste and rework and scrap and so on. And so that's how we calculate the cost of poor quality and the cost of quality itself. Download a 30-day trial of the QI Macros from QIMacros.com.